this voice. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Church. Morning. Good morning, church. Morning. It's a blessing to be here with you this Sunday. It's so good to see your faces. Brother Spoon, I thought you were going to lead singing, lead the Lord's Supper, and also take over the sermon. <laughs> Doing everything up here today. Don't look at me like that. I got to tease you now that I'm up here. It's not you. Um, please turn with me, church, to the book of Psalm, chapter 51. Thank you so much, for my brother, again, for reading. And I'm also just going to read again to set the context of today's sermon and conversation. Psalm 51, verse 10 to 11. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Amen. Rewriting the algorithm is the title of my talk today. And I want us to think about for a moment the technology that we interact with on a daily basis. Some of the most brilliant minds are paid very well to control us. They've created platforms that are designed to capture and keep our attention, right? For the maximum amount of time and to have the maximum amount of influence in our life, right? teaching us or telling us what they want us to buy, how they want us to think and believe, the views that they want to entrench in us, and also the content that is great at capturing and keeping our attention, right? Things that maybe keep us entertained, maybe things that keep us um, angry or even afraid at times, right? Or even aroused at times, right? The content that we see on a daily basis is meant and curated to keep us hooked, right? And these people, they spend millions of hours and billions of dollars on these algorithms, whether it be Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or Netflix, all of these platforms are continuously listening, right? To not only the things that we say, but our behaviors, the things that we like, the things that we've liked before, and they're always refining and updating to give us more of that same content, right? To give us more of the same, and to continue to control the way that we behave, and sometimes the way that we think. And again, they curate these things over and over and over. If I asked you to pull out your phone right now, and open any social media app, it would tell me how similar or how different we might be, right? It would tell me a lot about your viewing behavior. Mine would probably tell you about a lot of phone, a lot of uh, uh, houses and, and cars that I can't afford. Um, if I open Sister Nails, it's probably gonna be about murder minute mystery or some crazy uh, unsolved murder. So, Pray for me, because I don't know what she's saying, I'm just trying to say. Uh, if you opened maybe an older relative of mine, their phone, it might tell you about a lot of conspiracy theories, right? Or why not to take the COVID vaccine. Um, but your phones and your timelines say a lot about you, right? And what you consume on a daily basis. But these same things can fill us with a lot of negativity as well, right? What we consume, what we view,
view what these platforms and the people that create them are, are created to feed us, sometimes those things can be quite negative. Sometimes it can feel like poison when you're scrolling through your devices. Sometimes you scroll through your timeline and it can be like you're trapped in this endless feed of shock, right? And I can't believe this is happening in the world. It might be violence. It might be death. It might be divisive arguments, just people angry all the time. It might be the, the spirit of comparison, right? And you view these things and you say, well, why don't I have those things? Why isn't that my life? And it might be lust. It might be things that are designed to keep you staring and attracted and in a spirit of lust, right? But today, my, my, my sermon, unlike a lot of talks that I do, is not about technology and algorithms, but it's rather about your heart, church. And this morning, I want to ask you, Without 
repentance is like taking that bag of garbage, dumping it out in front of God, and then picking all that stuff right back up. Right? Confession. God, you know what? Here's all my stuff. But without repentance, you're like, hey, but God, you know what? This one. I, this one, I, but I enjoyed this one. But hey, I, I'm going to keep it, you know? This one, hey, God, this one is really hard. I, I don't have the strength to give this one up, so I'm going to keep this one too. Hey, oh, God, you know what? This one over here, all my friends, all these people, they know me for this plan, right? If I give this one up, then I can't be with those people anymore. My reputation is linked to this one. I don't know, Lord, if I'm ready to give this one up. Right? And we put all those things back. Right back into our pocket. Right back into our garbage bag. Jesus did not die on the cross for us to remain in the rubbish. Right? If we do that, if we do not take repentance serious, then we're saying that Christ's death wasn't serious. It wasn't enough. That we don't have enough power to fight these things. Repentance, confession and repentance means 180 degrees. It means complete opposite the other way. I'm going to turn, I'm going to stop, then I'm going to turn and I'm going to head in the right direction. And that's God's direction. Alright? Confession means, confession and repentance means taking that garbage, dumping it out at the cross, and never again. Alright? That's the effort that we have to deploy. The third thing that we need to write in and code and deploy is the spirit of pardon. All right? That's the beauty of being a Christian, is that once we repent, confess and repent, we can walk away from that bag of garbage. We don't have to keep carrying shame and guilt of where we were. With the garbage gone, with a new heart, God gives us forgiveness. Alright? We don't have to keep asking for it. We, have, we can say, God, help me with this and carry it over. This book of Psalm is not a book of, of uh, confession. Even though David is confessing and talking about sin and asking to be cleansed and made whiter than snow, this book is not a book about sin and confession. This book is about God's love and his mercy and his grace, all right? Human nature is sinful. I'm not saying it's okay for us to sin, but that's our nature. This is who we are, unfortunately. But God's nature is to forgive, all right? Our algorithm is set up for us to continuously make the same mistakes to continuously sin, to hurt other people. God's algorithm is an algorithm of love and forgiveness. That's why being here is so important, because if we didn't have that, we would be lost to the world. If we didn't have the power to come before God and say, God, you know what? Cleanse me. Clean me up. We'd be lost. Here, in a line straight to hell. But the power and beauty of Christ is that that's not our life. That's not what we are stuck with. We can take that garbage out. We can, those who are, are heavy laden by all of that can hand it over and be created anew. And when we do this, we can have a whole new clean and pure timeline. Right? We can have an experience with God that is so beautiful how it's meant to be. I just want to close out with one last scripture in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Because this is the experience that I think God wants us to have. And the heart that I believe that he wants to have. He wants us to have a heart. Chapter 4 verse 8. A heart. Right? That is true. A heart that is noble. A heart that is right. A heart that is pure, a heart that is lovely, a heart that is admirable, a heart that is praiseworthy. This is the kind of heart 
that Christ wants to give us. Right? So this morning, church, if you are overwhelmed with where your heart is, with where your mind is, if you're feeling lost to what the world keeps constantly feeding you on a daily basis, right? all you have to do is say, God, the great engineer, the great coder, please rewrite my algorithm. Please give me a new heart. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I don't want to be in sin anymore. I don't want to be in pain. Right? The devil can also use just pain and sorrow and depression to overwhelm our hearts. It's not just sin. He can fill us with so much negativity that we believe that we can't get out of it. And when we want it, to God says, come to me and I'll give you a new heart, a heart of joy, a heart of peace that doesn't make any sense. That's the love that we have. And when we do so, we get these clean hearts and we get these renewed spirits, our service improves. The quality of our service improves. The quality of our work for him improves. The church grows. People see light. And a beacon of joy, that's what Hilltop can be. That's what we can be as individuals. So I hope you take this message, church, and are encouraged to rewrite the algorithm in your hearts. Amen. Amen.